Hey, what's up guys? This is going to be a quick video walkthrough of the installation and setup process for the Build Your Own Botnet Web GUI. So the first thing I've done here is I've created an instance uh, on VirtualBox running Ubuntu 20.04. I'd recommend you do the same. You can you know, spin up a VPS if you want to or whatever method you want. Um, I would just recommend sticking with Ubuntu 20.04 because that's the only one I've tested it thoroughly on, uh, although it'll likely work on other operating systems. So the first thing I'm going to do is do a sudo apt-get install git. This is a completely fresh install, so I've not entered a single command yet. So you're seeing the entire process from scratch right now. So I'm going to let that run. And you could just alternatively open up your browser, go to GitHub, and download BYOB from there. That'll work just fine. But I'm just installing git um, because it'll just make it a lot easier for you to pull changes in the future, which undoubtedly there will be many improvements, bug fixes, etc. So um, this is just a method I recommend. All right, now that that's finished, I'm going to make sure I'm in my home directory here, which you can install as wherever you want, but I'm just going to do it in the home directory. And then I'm going to do a git clone, well, and this is sudo just in case there's permissions issues writing to the disk. sudo git clone github.com slash malware LLC slash BYOB. This is going to clone the GitHub repository to my local virtual machine here. Okay, if you do a quick ls now, you should see a BYOB directory. So we're going to cd change directory into that directory. And now you'll see what we're going to do is now cd into the web GUI subdirectory. So we're going to cd into there. And now, you can see there is this file startup.sh. This is a bash script that will do the heavy lifting for us as far as making sure all the Python modules are installed and building the Docker images and all those kinds of things. Speaking of Docker images though, in order for this startup.sh to run properly, we're going to need Docker installed. So to do that, we're going to do sudo app get install docker.io-y for yes. Isn't prompt me over and over again, are you sure you want to install this? Are you, are you sure? Sorry, Ubuntu, I wasn't mocking you. I'm just trying to fill the uh, silence here. <laughs> All right, Docker is now installed, and uh, we can verify that by doing a quick status check on Docker and uh, we see it is dead though. Okay, so maybe we have to do a quick system control Docker start, perhaps. There we go, okay. So now Docker is running, and so that's a common issue I've seen people running into is that everything will run fine, the, Docker, uh, the Python modules will get installed, the web app opens, and they can log in and everything, um, but then when trying to compile an executable, they get an error saying that the Docker daemon is not available, and so um, this should resolve that issue. Just make sure to start Docker before proceeding. So now that we're good, we can do another ls. Blah. And now uh, we should be good to run startup.sh. Note that if you don't have Python installed, um, you will need to do that. I won't need to install it right now though because Ubuntu 20.04 comes with Python 3.8 pre-installed. So I do Python 3. You can see right here Python 3.8.2 is the current version of Python that is installed. So exit and let's give it a shot. I'm going to do sudo startup.sh. Oh, we don't have pip. We don't have pip. Control C, Control C, quick. All right, Ooh, that was a close one. So I forgot Python 3 for some godforsaken reason does not include pip. So I'm gonna do sudo apt get install python3 pip. It's gonna ask me if I'm sure. I forgot to do dash y. There we go. Well, the reason we need pip is because the package manager for, for Python and the Startup script is going to um, make sure that we pip install all the necessary packages. So, 
yeah, we're, we're going to need it. One thing I want to note here is these last two modules I'm installing, um, the Pi Crypto Knight and Pi RX, are not super stable. Um, they commonly, I've run into uh, installation errors with these. Those are, they're very strange errors that are not errors with BYOB, but with these libraries. Um, I've, you know, put in issues off GitHub with the developers and I'm still waiting to get some traction on those. So in the meantime, though, it's fine. You can just move on. They aren't strictly necessary. What, what they are for is for the miner module to mine Monero. And um, essentially, don't worry, there's a backup method. So the miner module has two methods for mining. It has method A, which is a Python implementation, which uses the PyCryptonite and the PyRx modules, which have C extensions to do the heavy lifting, you know, the computationally expensive crypto stuff uh, with the actual, you know, requesting to the uh, mining pool server for new jobs and stuff actually done in Python. If these libraries uh, are not detected though, and they're not installed, then it will uh, revert back to just downloading and using XMRig, um, which is you know well-known standard uh, miner. So um, don't worry if you get errors installing PyRx or PyCryptoMain, um, you should be just fine. So quick note here, guys, I just wanted to show you the error I was talking about and a workaround for it. This is the error when PyRx fails to get installed properly. You can go down a rabbit hole and manage to get it working eventually, but it's just not necessary and it's a big time sink, so I'm gonna show you a quick workaround. So I'm gonna show you on my computer. All you have to do is do a sudo nano requirements.txt, and you see we're in the web GUI folder here still. And then we simply just delete the line installing PyRx. Save it and then run the startup script. And that's the workaround. Okay, so we come back to our main uh, Ubuntu instance here where we're installing BYLB. Just wanted to point out to you guys, when you see this stuff starting to happen with Docker, this is gonna take a while. It's building the Docker images from the Docker files in the Docker Py installer folder, and uh, it takes a significant amount of time uh, to build these, it, probably like 15 minutes. So feel free to get up and get a snack or something while you're waiting for this. And also, another important note here, you will see some red messages pop up like this. Don't worry about those. I think it's just happening because it's printing to standard out. Um, I don't, not 100% sure why, but it, it's fine. Don't worry about it. It's not a problem. Just ignore it. Um, and, and in some cases, you'll see like big chunks of red text appearing, which you know, in a lot of cases would mean catastrophic error is occurring, you know, abort immediately, but in, in this case, it's fine. So, just a heads up. Alright, we did it guys. The BYOB web GUI is now officially installed and running. You can see that because it finished building the last Docker container, and uh, the Flask server is indicated is now running on port 5000. Keep in mind this 0.0.0.0, .0, .0 IP address simply indicates that it is running uh, externally facing the internet on your public IP address basically um, for all intents and purposes anyways so one thing to keep in mind is that if you have if you're running this in some sort of weird server or, or in some sort of strange environment um, like from behind a NAT or something network address translator uh, I, I've seen that cause problems for some people the easiest way for this to work is just to run it directly facing the internet publicly exposed so um, at that point, you can just right click on the link and click open. It will launch your default web browser and you should see the web app open.